Good morning. Very warm welcome to our second Criteria Masterclass event brought to you today by Mortgage Brain. So thank you ever so much, everyone, for joining us. Um, my name is Grace Teager. I am the product owner for Criteria Brain and Affordability Brain at Mortgage Brain. And it's my great pleasure today to welcome you to our virtual event. And this is the second of our masterclass event. So I really hope you enjoy um, the event and being with us today. And um, today's masterclass is brought to you by Principality Intermediaries. And I'm pleased to introduce you today our presenter, Peter Coldcott, who is the key account manager at Principality Intermediaries. Peter is going to delve into the topic of holiday lets. Um, at the time when staycationing in the UK has never been more popular, there's a growing opportunity here that exists to help your clients enter this market. After the presentation, Peter will be available to answer any questions that you um, may have. So make sure you get those over to us. Um, before I pass over to Peter, we would love to hear your feedback about today's event. Um, we will be sending you a quick email this afternoon with a questionnaire. So if you wouldn't mind just taking a few minutes to fill that in and get your feedback over to us, that would be brilliant. Um, yeah, thank you in advance for doing that. Um, so I will now hand over to today's speaker um, for the brilliant presentation. So I'm delighted to introduce you today, Peter Coldercott from Principality Intermediaries. Hi, Grace, and thank you very much for the introduction. I'm delighted to be here today. And I'm going to start with sharing the presentation with you all. So just bear with me one moment while I get that on screen for you. Perfect. Um, so thank you very much. And thank you all for attending today. I'm sure what is a busy time during half term. And also we have Richard Shunak presenting to us all later on around the economy. So anything I talk about today, particularly about tax, please ignore it um, because it may well be out of date within the next couple of hours. But um, really delighted to be here with you today. My name is Peter Caldicott. I'm the key account manager at the Principality, and I'll just run through the agenda today. My presentation should last about 20 to 25 minutes tops, and I'll be covering a little bit about Principality and the opportunities in the holiday let space. I'll also talk about Principality's holiday let proposition, the holiday let market, what a typical holiday let customer looks like, a little bit about our criteria and how you can actually submit a holiday let application and how we calculate affordability. I'll also touch briefly on taxation um, in holiday lets. Now, I am no tax expert, so I'm using slides provided from Willis Jones Chartered Accountants, and I'll be touching on some basic facts around the current taxation position, but I just want to highlight really that I am no tax specialist, and any tax advice needs to be taken independently of this presentation. I'll also review a few case studies, including some principality USPs. Then we'll go to Q&A and then close. So moving on with the presentation, um, principality, I'm sure many of you are familiar with the Principality Building Society. We are the sixth largest building society in the UK, um, and we actually have 54 branches predominantly across our heartlands and the borders of Wales. Um, so we are, if you think about Principality in Wales, we're pretty much like the nationwide. Wherever you look, there's a branch on pretty much every high street. And we're also proud sponsors of the Principality Stadium, the National Stadium of Wales, that many of you may be familiar with, 80,000 capacity. Um, obviously, there's the big concerts that are held there and the Welsh rugby team um, do um, play at the Principality as well. So we have a very strong presence and brand in Wales, but we do lend across the entirety of both England and Wales. And interestingly, I mean, we're about a one and a half to two billion a year lender currently in the market. But 85 percent of our lending this year is it has been in England and 92 percent of that has been through the broker channel. So whilst we're a really strong brand name in Wales, we lend a large proportion of our business is in England, too. And we have 11 field-based BDMs and um, also a dedicated intermediary desk with telephone-based BDMs there as well. And I'll provide the contact details of those individuals later on for you. We're really pleased to confirm we just won the Watt Mortgage Award for Best Building Society Customer Service 2021. And that's the fourth year in succession that we've won that Watt Mortgage Award. So absolutely delighted. And that just reinforces how important brokers are and service to our proposition. 
Now, at Principality, we are true holiday let specialists. We're one of the largest holiday let providers in the UK. And I'm proud to say we were the only holiday let provider that remained in the space when we went through the um, COVID pandemic. Every other lender pulled out of holiday lets for a short period of time. Principality remained within the space. And we're really proud about that and will continue to be big supporters of the holiday lot let proposition moving forward. So um, there is, as Grace mentioned, a growing opportunity that exists within the holiday let space. Um, the holiday let market presents an excellent opportunity, particularly with Brexit, the decline in sterling, and in particular the current coronavirus pandemic. Holidaying in the UK has never been more popular. Now, when we consider holiday let yields, they often exceed those of HMOs and even student lets. And the tax position is far more favourable than standard buy to lets as well. So when we consider that, we're talking about a higher yield and less tax. It's an absolute win win. And when we talk about investing in holiday lets alongside this holiday lets tend to have the lowest level of arrears lower loan to values and larger loan sizes than traditional buy to lets. So with that in mind, many mortgage advisors see holiday lets now as a really attractive alternative for both their high net worth and buy to let clients. And there's probably never been a better time to learn more about the holiday let space. Now, I've been kindly supplied with some interesting statistics and some details from Travel Chapter. So I'll run through some of these um, with COVID concerns. So COVID concerns are heavily shifting customer focus to domestic staycations in the UK. More certainty, more uncertainty with overseas holidays due to the closure of travel corridors, the introduction of quarantine hotels and the vaccine rollout varying in pace in all of the countries across the world mean that the staycation market is continuing to grow. Self-catering accommodation generally is generally considered a safer option than other forms of accommodation as you're in your own bubble and with family and friends. So when we think about city breaks, trips across the UK now, then it's less popular to stay in hotel accommodation. People are far more keen rather than having to, to access shared areas, use lifts, etc. They'd much rather utilize the benefit of a holiday let. Brexit anxiety and the rising cost of overseas travel from the weak pound is also driving more demand to UK holidays. Market changes and an increase in popularity of staycations are driving an increasing number of letting inquiries from those who are looking to buy and invest in a holiday home. Stats from holidaycottages.co.uk have seen a 60% increase in those types of inquiries in the last 12 months. And recent surveys indicate a high intent to holiday in the UK this year, uh, an increase of up to 59% compared to the previous year. But more impo importantly, when we move into 2022 and beyond, um, the, there is an expected further increase in domestic tourism um, predicted. And domestic overnight tourism is also expected to reach £18 billion, up 82% on last year. Uh, so we all know about, we've heard about it in the press, we see it everywhere, the proliferate, proliferation of the holiday let marketplace, how it's growing and the real opportunities within this space. So what does that all mean? Well, it means a significant increase in the property, popularity of UK staycations fueled by concerns over COVID and Brexit uncertainty. This presents a huge opportunity for accommodation providers in the UK. The increase in popularity of staycations are driving an increasing number of letting inquiries from those who are looking to buy and invest in holiday homes. Holidaycottages.co.uk has actually seen a 60% increase in the last 12 months. Alongside all of that, we've talked already about the high yields in this space and the added tax advantages. So very quickly, what influences the likely investment return of a property? Well, no big surprises. Location, location, location is the key. And sea views, um, for example, command on average two and a half thousand pounds more in revenue per annum. But we've also seen a massive growth in short breaks 
um, for, uh, they're becoming increasingly popular and now actually represent over 30% of all bookings. Now, when we think about city breaks, there's a real opportunity there from a short break perspective. The size of the property can also really influence the level of, it, of, of rental income and rental yield. So the larger the property, the more people it can accommodate, means it can demand a much higher weekly price and a higher return. An enclosed garden for barbecues, higher quality finishings and furnishings are key, are key um, indicators too of a higher yield. Um, open fire or a wood burner can actually help increase annual revenue by an average of 12% and generate an additional three bookings per year. And even a hot tub, 15% increase in the weekly price and an additional five bookings. So there's a lot I'm going to shoot through today, but I will make this presentation. We will make the presentation available for you to study in a little bit more detail. But in conclusion, the staycation sector is set for a bright future into 2022 and beyond. There is increased demand for high quality accommodation to a hotel standard with cleanliness high on the list of priorities. Having the right property in the right location with the right features is really key to be successful in this space. And working with a holiday less expert from, from the start really does help maximize potential. So thank you for Travel Chapter for sharing that with us. So moving on to the holiday let market, there are two types of market holiday lets. There's the complex holiday let market. Now this is a far more limited market and there are, there are far less lenders in this space and principality aren't in the complex holiday let market either. It tends to be more commercial lenders, but these tend to comprise of properties that are part of multi-units, have restrictive covenants, and may be located on a holiday park, um, consist of se several properties under a single title deed, potentially a limited company holiday let, or even have a commercial element to them. So for example, there might be a cafeteria on the ground floor, a flat above. Um, those sort of areas, that's more of a commercial lend, and it's not a big market um, out there. The really big market is vanilla holiday lets, and that's where principality is. And the vast majority of holiday let lenders in the marketplace tend to deal with predominantly the vanilla space. That comprises of um, individual personal purchases. Now, that's quite an interesting difference when we talk about standard buy to lets and the growth of the limited company buy to let space. Actually, in holiday lets, you you see very rarely limited company holiday lets, and that's because the taxation for personal holiday lets is far better, the benefits are far better to go down the personal route than via a limited company. We also look at, um, consists of one building under a single title deed. Um, it, it, the properties need to be able to be resold as residential properties and have no restrictive covenants. They can't be located in holiday, holiday parks, leisure complexes or golf courses, and they can't have any commercial element. So that is the lion's share of the market, principality operating in the vanilla holiday let marketplace. So what does a typical holiday let customer look like? Well, the demographics of a holiday let mortgage customer differ from a typical buy to let investor. Customers tend to be mainly professionals in more senior management and director positions. They tend to be high in net worth, less sensitive to economic change. And on average, a typical um, principality customer currently is earning over 60 to 80,000 pounds family income. The average loan size we're currently offering um, across all areas of holiday let business is at around 270,000. And the average loan to value is 61%. Now, when we consider most of the applicants for holiday lets are employed, and personal covenants are usually excellent. So their motives to purchase tend to differ a little bit from a standard buy to let investor because they already have made their money and unlike buy to lets, it tends to be more of an emotive decision rather than just commercial. They may be looking to buy in an area that they know and love and feel comfortable with and intend to get some personal use for family and friends of that holiday let property. Um, interestingly, over 30% of all principality customers intend to retire to the holiday let property that they're purchasing, and they feel it makes sense to buy that property in the area at today's prices. 
So it can very often be a lifestyle choice rather than a purely commercial money making exercise. That said, I am going to con con um, contradict myself slightly there in that obviously over the last 18 months, the growth of the um, holiday let space has meant it has become far more commercial than it's ever been. And particularly for portfolio fight to let customers, they're looking at the opportunities to grow yield and to grow their business. And, you know, holiday lets is absolutely a really, really strong contender for that type of customer. I'm just going to share with you a little map of, again, this is a heat map of the UK where the lion's share of holiday let customers are positioned. No massive surprises here. If you look at the red um, heat map there, you can see the vast majority of locations tend to be in those prime holiday let locations along the coast, in Wales, the Lake District, etc. But you'll see certain heat maps. For example, Cardiff is particularly popular for holiday lets, Cardiff City Centre. If you think about, obviously, our namesake, the Principality Stadium that we sponsor, you have the Welsh Internationals and you have the, the big concerts that appear at the uh, Principality. Alongside that, you have Cardiff Castle, you have the Bay, you have the city centre location. So, so um, Airbnb and city centre locations and flats now are becoming far more popular um, for holiday let cases. And we can consider Airbnb for new build flats, for example. So when we consider the, our principality's holiday let criteria, the minimum loan size for principality is 25,000. We can lend, however, up to 750,000 at 60% loan to value and up to half a million pounds up to our max LTV at 75%. So 75% is the maximum loan to value for holiday lets. We accept a minimum property value of 50,000 and we've just increased our maximum age to 85 at the end of the term so that's a really good uh, message around length of term we can do we can we could take for example a 60 year old individual now that applies at the outset offer them a 15 year term on a buy to, on a holiday let and buy to let applicants do need to have been residential owner occupies within the last 12 months however there is an exception to every rule for example, if someone's in tight accommodation or if they're living with a partner and their partner has a mortgage, please refer those cases to your local BDM because we can make exceptions to that rule. One of um, Principality's key USPs has been four applicants utilising all four incomes in the residential market. But four applicants is also available on both our buy to let and holiday let range. And only the first named applicant needs to fit both the minimum income requirement and and be a homeowner so for example if you have the first name applicant as a homeowner there could be three others that don't own their own home and don't necessarily fit the minimum income criteria either so well worth knowing from a full applicant's perspective we can do remortgages and capital raising it's available up to 75 percent loan to value for holiday lets uh, we don't allow for debt consolidation, but for any other purpose, if it's home improvements to fund a deposit for another purchase, that's absolutely fine. And we can do home improvements both on the holiday let itself, or we could do that on another property that the applicant owns. Uh, we have recently launched with MSO, our new mortgage origination system, and that now allows us as well to do AIP, AIPs and decisioning principles for both buy to lets and holiday lets. We do have specific holiday let products available within our range with competitive fee-free rates. And it's important to know that first-time landlords are acceptable at Principality. We can do new build flats and houses, again, up to 75%. And we've already touched on the fact that first-time landlords are also acceptable. So first-time landlords and new build flats and houses is quite a good mix. We can do now, we've increased down the number of holiday lets we can allow per person to two. And the number of holiday lets, the number of holiday lets aren't restricted by how many buy to let mortgages an applicant has in the background. For example, if, you, if you're a buy to let customer with Principality, we will only lend a maximum of three buy to lets with us or elsewhere. But that doesn't apply if someone's applying for a holiday let. They could have a large portfolio of buy to lets in the background. The only rule that applies is that we can't do more than two holiday lets with us or elsewhere. 
and Airbnb is also acceptable. We were also seeing quite a lot of, uh, of let to buy applications from a holiday let perspective, where somebody, for example, may be living in a property in a prime holiday let area, wants to do a let to buy to maybe raise the deposit for an onward purchase. That's absolutely acceptable. We could do both mortgages. We could do the let to buy at 75% to raise a deposit and do that on a holiday let basis. And then we could then fund whether it's another buy to let property or an onward purchase for them to move into, we can consider that too. Um, family gifted equity and deposits are also acceptable and owners are allowed to use the property for friends and family for up to eight weeks of the year. Now, no need to worry, the Principality Police won't be sat outside determining how many weeks the families and friends do use that property, but it's just nice to have the comfort that they are legitimately allowed to use that property for friends and family for up to eight weeks. Now, there is a minimum income requirement on holiday lets. For mortgages up to 250,000, the sole income is 20,000. And for joint applications, joint income is 30. Now, we have made a really good development around for mortgages over 250. Our minimum income requirement used to be 80,000, single or joint. And surprisingly, the vast majority of customers that that tend to request over 250 do fit that 80,000 criteria. But the great news is we've just reduced that now down to 40,000. So as long as there's 40,000 joint income, we can lend up to 750,000 at 60% LTV. Now, probably the number one thing that people are confused about or, or don't know a great deal about in the holiday let space is the way we calculate affordability. Now, the maximum loan size is determined by an, uh, an estimate. It's a letter from a local holiday let agent. And what we need from that holiday let agent is the weekly average high, mid and low seasonal rents. So we're looking for low, mid and high weekly average rentals. Those three numbers uh, is all we need when we're assessing affordability, because when the property is valued, um, it will be valued by a value, but the value at 99 times out of 100 won't be commenting on the rental income of a holiday let. We utilize that letter from a local letting agent. So how do we calculate the rental yield? Um, we look at taking an average of the low, medium and high. So what we do is we add those three numbers together, divide it by three to give us an average, and we times it by 30 weeks because that's the anticipated number of weeks that we anticipate the property being rented. That will give us the rental figure achievable. Now, when we then look at affordability, we use the same principle as our buy to lets and we look at 5.5% interest at 145%. So if you're looking to get what rental figure is required, you put in the mortgage. So let's say it's 100,000 times by 5.5% times by 145% will give you that rental figure required. And the rental achievable figure must be equal to or greater than the rental figure required. Now, don't feel um, too confused about that calculation. If you feel it's difficult, you can always speak to your local BDM or contact the team at head office and they will run through that calculation for you. So let, moving on to taxation, um, I'm gonna speak to you a little bit about tax, but again, I only want to give you facts in relation to this because I'm not a qualified taxation advisor. But I've talked about the fact that furnished holiday lets have a far more favourable tax position than standard buy to let cases. Firstly, to qualify as a holiday let, the property needs to be furnished and the property needs to be situated in the UK or any other state in the European economic area and the ECC, plus Norway, Ireland and Liechtenstein. We are limited, however, at Principality to lending in England and Wales currently. The property must be available for letting as a holiday accommodation to the public for at least 210 days in a year, of which the property must actually be let for 105 days or more as holiday accommodation. If you have multiple properties, there is an averaging election which can be made in certain circumstances which can help satisfy this condition where some properties are let out for fewer than 105 days, 
if, if another one's let out for more, you, you can balance that out. And as a rule, if the property is let for a continuous period of more than 31 days, then this will not qualify as letting as holiday accommodation. So really important to, to consider that from a taxation perspective. Now, I'm just going to run through these briefly, but income is treated as a trade for income tax purposes. The restriction on finance interest for lettings do not apply, does not apply to holiday lets. And furnishings qualify for capital allowances and profits made from holiday lets are treated as earned income for tax purposes. Now, period of grace election where the property has passed the letting conditions in the previous year, a period of grace election may safeguard that accommodation's furnished holiday let status for up to two years. Now, that's really important when you consider the market did completely shut down for a period. So there will be individuals that may not have let their holiday lets for a significant period of time. There is the ability to use that, uh, that grace period. And important to note, spouses or civil partners who operate the business jointly can choose how they split the profits. So it doesn't have to be 50-50. So profits can be given to the person paying the lowest marginal rate of tax and could have significant tax savings. When we think about principalities offering, you can have up to four applicants on an application. You can really see the potential tax benefits of that. Um, there are capital gain tax benefits as well. I'm not going to talk about those today. I'm going to move through this area because I don't want to get too in depth into the taxation piece. But just important to highlight that obviously um, customers will need to consult with an independent um, tax advisor to, to ensure that they're on the right track. So obviously that's always subject to change uh, moving forward as well. What I'd also like to do is just run through a couple of case studies with you just to give you some ideas of typical cases that, that have worked at Principality. The first one is applicants lived in a seaside town and were struggling to sell their existing house. They wanted to raise the deposit for their onward residential purchase by converting their existing mortgage to a holiday let, let to buy. This would increase their negotiating strength because there would be no chain and they would effectively become cash purchasers. Now, this let to buy remortgage was approved at Principality. We accepted the application on holiday let rates and released the additional funds for the deposit up front because the applicants were able to move in with family. This then enabled them to successfully negotiate a favorable purchase price without the hassle of a chain. So a great example there. We are a little bit more strict on these types of cases now. Ideally, we prefer a memorandum of sale um, if we've got a let to buy where they're raising money for a, a future deposit, but we can consider each case on its individual merits. Another great example around maximum loan size uh, and a first time landlord is we had an applicant based in Bath, regularly visits Cornwall with his family for short breaks and recognises the potential of purchasing a holiday let in the area. He is a limited company director, earning over 40,000 in salary and dividends and has a considerable deposit. He wishes to purchase his first rental property as a holiday let. Now we approve that case because um, we will consider first time landlords and we at eight to 60 percent will consider a loan size of up to 750 and at 75 percent LTV up to half a million pounds. The property will achieve will achieve a strong rental yield as a holiday let to support affordability and will allow for the applicant's own holiday let usage. So key criteria points there, first time landlord um, and um, lending up to 750 at uh, that's LTV. Final one to leave you with, a four-person buy-to-let or holiday-let case. We have four siblings who have inherited a property that's in a nice holiday-let location. So they would like to keep it and rent it out uh, on a holiday-let basis. It will be their first rental property, and they would like to raise some additional capital to carry out some home improvements and bring the property more up to date and, and make sure that they can achieve that higher yield. The applicants are age 55, 57, 60 and 61 and require as much flexibility as possible with regards to the mortgage term. Each applicant is a residential homeowner and earns over £20,000. 
Now, we approved that deal because we were able to consider up to age 85 on both buy-to-let and holiday-let cases. So we're talking about going to age 85 for applicants for incomes and the benefits that could potentially run alongside that. So I'm really conscious. I've gone through a lot of detail around the size of the opportunity in the space, the types of deals that Principality can write, some of our criteria, a little bit around tax as well. But that's just the beginning of the story. The, the market is continuing to grow and there's massive opportunities into 2022 and beyond to really take advantage of this space. Um, I've left up details here of our key business development managers, field based, that are out on the road. But we also have a wonderful team on our desk that can help with any further inquiries you have. And you can contact them on 0330 333 4021. So thank you very much for your time today. I'm going to stop sharing and hopefully we can then move to Q&A. Brilliant. Thank you ever so much, Peter. Really interesting presentation. Um, I'm from sunny Suffolk, so definitely towns like Alborough and Southwold have been particularly busy with um, people enjoying the seaside over the summer. And we have had some questions come through. And um, so if I could just ask those um, as well. So um, do you guys lend in Scotland? Do you know, that's a really great question. I think Michael's um, popped that question in. Well, we don't lend in Scotland, I'm afraid, at the moment. That said, we've just spent £75 million on our new mortgage origination system, MSO. Um, many of you may be familiar with that system in that it's Leeds, use it, and Accord and Lloyds. And that has meant that we it will open up the opportunity for us to lend in Scotland moving forward. So we haven't accessed the Scottish market yet, but watch this space. It's certainly not going to be probably not the first half of 2020, but 2022, sorry. But watch this space. Hopefully we will be moving into the into the Scottish space. And it may be that we choose to do that with holiday lets moving forward. Brilliant. Um, do you consider Airbnb in city centre locations? Great. I mean, that's a, that's a really good question. And we touched on that briefly. And we're finding that when we initially launched our holiday let proposition, a typical property would have been that cottage in the centre of Wales or a really nice traditional holiday let location. But I touched on the fact that Cardiff, for example, we're seeing you know proliferation, a proliferation of holiday let opportunities. So from that respect, Absolutely. We do Airbnb. We do city centre locations, but it does need to justify that. Um, but we've got a, a large number of new build flats, for example, on a holiday let mortgage in Cardiff city centre. So it's definitely an area that we can consider. I'd suggest probably referring that to your local BDM. So give us a ring and we can chat through individual cases to determine if it's one that's going to fit. Brilliant. Um, question from Louise. Will you lend to Brits who work abroad on an expat contract? OK, unfortunately, we can't lend to, to expats, I'm afraid. But their main residence does need to be in the UK. Um, it's an area that we're looking at potentially for the future. But at the moment, I'm afraid that's a no. Um, it's probably worth highlighting though, that we do have a really strong non-EEA national proposition that also applies to holiday lets. So um, we can lend to non-EEA nationals, both for holiday lets and our traditional residential range with no loan to value restrictions, so long as they have lived in the UK for a minimum of three years and have two years remaining on their visa at application. The key point is it can be any type of visa, so that could be spouse or student, tier one, tier two, doesn't matter, as long as there's one year remaining, sorry, two years remaining, at application, we can accept those types of customers. Brilliant. Um, another question here. Do you have a restriction on the number of bedrooms in a property? Great question. Um, we don't. Um, many lenders do in the holiday let space, but we found the more bedrooms, very often the more flexible and the higher yield you can achieve. So we don't have a specific restriction. The key fundamental for us is as long as there's there's an audience and we're finding increasingly extended families over covid are looking to get you know for, for the christmas get togethers for the breaks away they're looking for maybe six seven bedrooms um you know to to, to accommodate those types of families so we don't have a restriction though no. brilliant 
Um, question from Ashley on Airbnb again. So is the Airbnb rental calculation the same as a normal holiday let? Another great question. Now, we we, we, we will um, consider all Airbnb applications, but what we should try and suggest you do is try and get a, a letter from a local holiday let agent. Um, they will always provide you with that. And if you can get that from Airbnb, confirm low, medium and high, then that's acceptable. Um, but you can always then, if, if you're not able to get that from Airbnb, you can always get that from a local holiday letting agent. And they're really keen to provide you with that information on the, on the, the potential to obviously let that property via them. Mm -hmm. So absolutely yeah, not a problem. And we're doing a lot more Airbnb than we've ever done. Cool. Um, a question from Andrew. Can you raise capital on your holiday let to make improvements on your residential property? Yes, you can. Um, so you can capital raise. Uh, the only We don't do debt consolidation. That's the only thing that we have an issue with on holiday let. So if you're looking to raise capital to do home improvements either on your residential or if you're looking to do it to do the home improvements to your um, holiday let property, that's absolutely fine. At the moment, we're asking for um, for quotes really for the work, just to see that there's there's some evidence there. But as long as we get quotes for the work and that seems legitimate, that's absolutely fine. That's not a problem. And we can also capital raise for funding the deposit for an onward purchase. Now that could be another buy to let in the background, another holiday let because we can do two or even um, your own residential, we can do that as well. Cool. Um, what flexibility do you have around the applicant being a homeowner occupier? Um, that's a good question. So we, we do have quite a, a degree of flexibility on this. I mean, our, our standard approach is they need to have owned a property within the last 12 months. Um, but there are great examples. For example, you might have someone that's in the armed services and is in subsidized accommodation. So it makes sense. They wouldn't be looking to own their own home if they're getting you know, very, very cheap rental for the property that they're living in. So if we can see examples like that, a caretaker is another great example there. Or you might find the situation where a couple, maybe an individual has gone through a divorce, has moved in with a new partner, mm -hmm. they have a mortgage. As, as long as we can make ourselves comfortable that the applicant isn't trying to circumvent um, affordability by going down the holiday let route, to because it, it fits on the rental but they couldn't afford it on this salary as long as we can get comfort around that we should be able to do the vast majority of those cases so that's another one that you need to refer to your local bdm cool um good question from naz here so how long do you um see the staycation market growing for okay well it, our our appetite i mean we've been in the holiday let market and the staycation market from from the day one really at principality it's always been a really lucrative market for, for us i think what's happened in the market obviously there's been a massive sea change and a lot of people are jumping into this space and there's always question marks of how long you know will the bubble burst are there issues but from our perspective yields will continue to remain particularly strong i mean for me I started to staycation in the UK for the very first time. And I will always make sure now I do more city breaks and I will always make sure I want to stay in the UK and discover the amazing you know, environment that we've got on our shores. So from that perspective, the long-term position will remain really, really strong. And let's not forget, when the whole of the world opens up, what's going to happen? Will individuals that are suffering, for example, in in America, the US, all over the world, when they're coming to holiday in the UK, will they be continue to go down the hotel route? Or might they think, you know what, I don't want to necessarily be in all of those shared spaces. Maybe I want to take an Airbnb. So actually, either way, we, we're winning because lots more people in the UK will will stay in the UK, but also people traveling from abroad may rather than go to down that hotel route, they'll probably adopt more of a holiday let approach. So there's a lot of opportunity. We see this market continuing to grow and the yields remaining strong. Brilliant. Lovely. Thank you so much. So we're going to draw um, the question section to a close there. But if um, there's any that we haven't got back to you, we do. Um, we will get a record of the questions so we can um, give you a response later in the day. And like Peter said, um, you can always contact any of the BDMs there or their head office team.
Um, but yeah, thank you ever so much, everyone, for joining. I hope you found the event useful. Um, so the event the, will be recorded and will be uploaded to Criteria Brain, so you can access that for the next 30 days. And as I mentioned at the start, we will be sending a short survey out for any feedback. Um, anything you can give us would be brilliant. Um, so yeah, thank you ever so much. Thank you massively to Peter for joining us today and really sort of opening our eyes to the holiday let market. It really is much appreciated. Um, look out for any masterclasses that are coming from us in the future. And yeah, thank you ever so much for joining. Hope you enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you. Thanks very much.